there is so much victory that comes in each little day of freedom, each little day of reprogramming the part of you that lived on the least of someone else. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, Shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot. Room 303. If you are new, welcome to our crew, but my returnees. You know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome back Wi-Fi to another Cult of Personality episode of The Wireless Woman. In this episode, we will be talking all about the bone collector. I'd say you have a natural instinct for forensics. And how you will never ever really be an ex to a narcissist. It's kind of like that Seven Streeter song. How can my ex-man be my next man? How can my ex-boyfriend be my next boyfriend? Well, ask a narcissist <laughs> and they will show you how but before we get into today's content you already know what time it is what are we gonna do tomorrow night the same thing we do every night pinky try to take over the world it is time to call the roll so I need all of my x-files to the front of the class it is time to read aloud All right, hello, Wi-Fi's, and welcome back to the Wireless Woman. Today, we are going to be continuing in my narcissistic personality disorder and narcissistic abuse survivor series, the Cult of Personality series. And I just need you to do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like the video, well, I love it. As you can hear, I've been battling a little bit um, with being under the weather. But of course, nothing, nothing but death can keep me from can keep me from this community that we have built here. So today, I'm going to be bringing you my bone collector episode. Now, one thing I have learned, if I haven't learned anything else, is that narcissists do not have exes. This is something that can be very frustrating for you if you are a new source of supply. You're going to run into this phenomenon with your narcissist where they have this loose conglomeration this collection of exes you know these people that they have had these deep meaningful experiences with who depend ever so much on them for their life sustenance and it's going to be very difficult to separate them from these people i first became aware <laughs> of this phenomenon after of course being in a relationship with a narcissist and that term the one that got away it took on like a whole new like criminal minds type of connotation the one that got away because literally narcissists leave no man behind early on you're gonna see a lot of scenarios like that well this is my ex or you know certain um 
flying monkey family members that it's like, well, I have to be there for this person. This person can't make it unless I'm there. No, no one else can go for me. No one else can go in my place. It has to be me, you know, from the very big excuses. Well, you know, this person's father died and I was in a relationship with her and, you know, I got really close with her dad. And so, you know, I just really want to be there for her and her family during this time. I'm like family to even the mundane, you know, I lived with her for six months and that cat was like my cat and she's lost her cat and she needs someone to comfort her. If it was you, I would do it for you. You know, you can't just unlove someone that you used to love, you know, and just attaching a whole lot of emotional significance to these expired relationships. Well, the reason why is because the narcissist is a bone collector. They are literally like those episodes of (laughs) Criminal Minds or those episodes of like serial killer documentaries that you see where that person holds on to a certain lock of the person's hair or they keep a trophy or they go back and visit the abduction site every year because literally for that person it's like having a harem full of worshipers so they're always one phone call one text away from sitting right back in an ex's face. And that's whether you yourself are the ex, or like I said, whether you are the new source of supply, because either way, that narcissist is never letting that tie to you go. Now, keep in mind, there are some exes that don't get hoovered back by narcissists for several different reasons. If you are no longer a good source of supply, for that person, for whatever reason. It could be that you caused a very detrimental narcissistic injury. It could be that you're aware that that person is a narcissist. So you're not gonna get a whole lot of energy put into maintaining that relationship with you. But for those of you that sat around for a long time, like I did, ruminating about the relationship, trying to figure out what went wrong, wanting closure (laughs) closure from the narcissist well you're going to always have this open gateway for them to continue to access you and you have to think if you were left that clueless that um, unresolved about the relationship how many other women or men have been in the same situation where you are it's literally a little cemetery of (laughs) haunted souls there that the narcissist can come in and access that spiritual energy at any time and because they are energy harvesters because they live to be on the mind of someone at all times this type of supply is a secondary supply source but it's just as important especially when narcissists go through narcissistic injuries in their primary relationships you'll see them running right back to these (laughs) x-files this little black book of x's in order to harvest that energy that may be depleted or lacking for them in their new relationship you know this person has been groomed this person has been programmed to the presets of the narcissist so it's a lot easier to go back that way and reaccess that energy than all the energy that a narcissist has to expel to groom a new supply you know to secure that all the love bombing all the idealization that can be very emotionally taxing for a narcissistic person. Those of us who have survived, (laughs) and I'm gonna tell you, a lot of people won't say this, but just making it out, just regaining your wits about you, just finding your way out of the fog of a narcissistic relationship is amazing. Like you have done the impossible. Many people never made it out of their relationships And you'll never really be the same, but you can actually in a lot of ways be better. People said that to me when, you know, my narcissistic marriage fell apart. They said, you know, one day you're going to look back on this. And I was like, how? You know, there was still that unresolved feeling. And not to mention the fact that my ex would haunt me like it was a seance. 
Oh my God, what's happening? You know, it's not like any other addiction or any other drug that you can put down, walk away from and isolate yourself from because this person can pick up the phone. This person can come by your house. Hey, you know, I saw the light on upstairs and I just wanted to check on you and see how you were doing. I just wanted to, you know, send you a card. It's your birthday. It's a haunting. <laughs> it's very difficult to gain your wits back after a situation like that. So if you've done that, you know, if you've taken your power back, if you stood 10 toes down in your boundaries and in your strength and made it out, you are, it's, it's one of the most resilient things you could do in life is to survive your narcissistic relationship, and then thrive from it. I never thought I would be sitting in some of the moments that I have had now. And like I said, I'm a little under the weather, so I can't fully convey the joy that I live in. It's something that now that I have it, I would never trade for the fleeting moments of exhilaration that I had in my narcissistic relationship. You know, I thought nothing would ever compare to the highs that I felt in my narcissistic relationship. But there is a contentment, there is a joy that comes in having your own power, your own autonomy back, and getting your confidence back in surrounding yourself with people that love you and that you can trust. There is so much victory that comes in each little day of freedom. Each little day of reprogramming the part of you that lived on the least of someone else. You will feel better. It will get easier to take those steps. Just realize that all those times you get compared to that ex, all of those inappropriate text messages that you find, it's that person's way of feeling their tank and it really has nothing to do with you because they're oppositionally defiant no matter how good of a partner you are they're going to always find some way to devalue and triangulate you with other people that is not going to change whether it's their mother whether it's other women that they've idealized you see this a lot now with social media because people have access to being able to get that dopamine fix from likes, from DMs, from comments. And so it's like a similar structure to that. You know, the ex is that DM queen that just kind of comes in and, you know, if we were together, I would never treat you like that. You would never go through that with me and just gives that person that residual energy and they're going to always desire to have it from a primary partner. When they discard those exes, they discarded them for a reason. There was some inability in that person to supply the narcissist every want and need and desire. And you have to remember, they idealize people. So they're never going to find that perfect person, even if they stay in a relationship with a person, that person is still going through that devaluation discard phase. They're going through days, weeks, and possibly months of silent treatment. That person is not being treated better than you because you have to understand what makes a narcissist a narcissist is being stuck in that perpetual, stunted, arrested development of that teenage phase. And like I've said, any people who are parents of teenage children understand that angst. They love and need you one day, then you don't get them, you don't understand them. Like nobody devalues and discards people like teenagers do. I mean, baby, they are narcissistic monsters. And that's why too is very important as a parent to teenage children that you really usher them through that developmental phase into adulthood. You cannot coddle and appease and acquiesce to these teenagers. You are going to create a monster. And yes, narcissistic personality disorder occurs a little bit earlier than that adolescent phase, but you're still dealing with a prepubescent adolescent arrested development they're stunted around that 
age in their mind and they just never get to that non-entitled place of adulthood that says, you know, I have some responsibility here. You know, everything's not going to be perfect. You know, there are some places where I can be a little bit more flexible. There are some negotiations that can be made that make this situation as comfortable for the other person as it is for me. Not with a narcissist, baby. They're not going to be able to see that other person ever. That's a really big red flag to look out for when you're out here in this dating world. I know they've got people with diagnosed narcissistic personality disorder somewhere around 5 to 10% of the population, but it just, it just isn't possible, especially with the advent of social media. You know, this is a growing population of people who, if are not in the cluster B personality disorder group, they definitely have a high level of narcissism and narcissistic traits. So we have to be begin to be aware of these red flags in the onset of a relationship so that you can save yourself a whole lot of wasted time and heartache. And like I said, this perpetual residual relationship with someone whose sole purpose in life <laughs> is to stay tapped into your life energy. People who survive narcissistic abuse are just as drained. It's like going through COVID two, three, four years later. Sometimes you just get hit and washed over with waves of nausea, of self-doubt it just comes out of nowhere sometimes and it catches you back up in its wave and if you're not careful you'll be right back on that line texting that x that x be right back in the dm it's almost like they can sense <laughs> that you're having like a bad day or a down moment hey i just wanted to check on you like uh and we look at it like, you know, people that ghost you and show back up three months later, six months later, nine months later, nine years later. Baby, that's a narcissist. OK, you need an exorcist to deal with a narcissist, baby. You, that's a haunting. OK, <laughs> so we're going to have to really begin to become aware of how we pull our energy back from all of these places that we've deposited it so that people like this don't continue to have power over you in your life. If you feel where I'm coming from and you're with me and you're ready to join this revolution of awake people who are not going to go into the dark with these narcissists, Make sure you drop me this fire headphone emoji in the comments. And please, by all means, share with me your experiences. If you feel like I missed anything or if you feel like there's another way to look at that perspective, I look forward to being able to engage with you in the comments. Until the next episode, you already know the drill. Class is now dismissed, wi -Fi. See you in the next one. All right, Wi-Fi, thank you so much for sticking around with me until the very end of this episode. If you like this content, you might want to check out this video here. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel with this link right here. Until the next episode, be unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. If you could just go ahead and make sure you do that from now on, that would be great.